Um, yeah, so usually I'm on a stage with a mic and a beat and a DJ and things like that. And But I'm getting old, you know, so it's like I'm not in my mid-20s anymore. And those shows get more and more awkward as I get older, you know what I mean? And this kind of thing, I was kind of excited because I was like, oh, I get to do something a cappella, like something where it's like, you know, out of the ordinary for myself. Um, and it's always a challenge. And, um, and I appreciate you. Thank you so much, brother. It's awesome. He is super humble, though. Like, seriously, his art is amazing, and he's just so chill. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to go right in. Uh, basically, these are, I guess you would call them poems because there's no beat attached to them, right? But they're songs when there is the music behind it, and I, I produce my own music. I, I play the oud, I play the guitar, I play drums, I play, you know, all my instruments I try to include. You know, I don't really sample that much, and I try to stay as creative as possible and try to stay... Um, ahead of my own game, you know what I mean? And nowadays, you know, hip hop has become uh, less and less the, uh, the the voice that I find in my head, you know, I think, but it's it's an important voice, but I think the youth that are out there doing it now are, are making far better music than what us old timers can make now. So I'm just giving you a warning, you're getting a glimpse into like, you know, the mid 2000s right now. And, and this is not, I'm not at the forefront of the hip hop movement any, any longer, I can promise you that, so. Um, Oh, and I just got off Mount Tam. That's my whole backpack right there with all my camping gear. I went straight from Mount Tam straight to here, and I got rained on last night. I woke up in a puddle like this deep. So, so forgive my lumberjack attire. I don't generally dress like this. I would have dressed up for this, but thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, this first piece is called Livid, and I'd say it's, um, it's, it's a good summation of how I feel. And in, I think, how all of us should feel, especially right now, we've got this dickhead Trump and we've got a horrible group of people that are following this guy. And it's those people, as, as, as Hillary said, are, these are degenerates. I'm serious. I was all around the country and these people are horrible. So this poem kind of encompasses my anger at what's been going on in this country for a while. Livid, and livid in this pivotal position. Speak amongst the weak or live within an inquisition. Every word I speak is recorded through their wishes, but a window for retreat isn't choice for my picking. Standing with my fist high, tongue tied, listening to song lies repeated while the sun dies. Eyes lie, but they're watching my reply. I'm expected to defy what my brown pride rendered alone. Never. We got control of our soul, trickling down these generations of pain as they build their walls of vain aim. And Lord, I pray to forgive, but when I wake in the morning, all I see is rain. Cause I'm just a man who never thought of a plan to be the man sick of looking for fortunes in the palm of my hands i'm just a man created to understand nothing i sit in silence while the thunderstorm is coming we live it and living in this pivotal position speak amongst the weak or live within this inquisition and oh i totally forgot it because the beat isn't there and i always have this part okay and we okay okay i'm gonna go to the next part of that i'm just gonna skip forward my bad um and living our life, living despite you rescinding our rights and bending the price of ending a life. We send in a fight to your ignorant might because the infinite light is on the side of epiphanous sight. And F-16s might circle the skies, but above your war crimes is a power most high because we never run and we never hide. They got us living on the wrong side of apartheid. And that was the end of that one. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's definitely challenging without the beat. It's kind of cool. <laughs> like, trying to think of it in my head. Um, this next piece uh, I wrote on my uncle's roof in, uh, in Ramallah. I was sitting up on his roof, hanging out, probably drinking some arak and just chilling, you know, because it was such a nice night and it was, the sun was going down. And he has, where he lives in Ramallah, he has this view of, of a very beautiful commanding view. Like, you could see, like, the, where Jerusalem is, you could see Betunia, you could see. Um, unfortunately, one of these, there you go, you're from Betunia, right? <laughs> awesome. Um, and you could also see one of those god-awful settlements, and they were just just popping off tracers right over my head, and I was just like, I don't know, it was, and it just came to my head, um, and this is what I wrote. Man, I miss the way she smiled at me, unforgiving streets just a mile from me, white men with F-16s. I smelled your dusty air complete with the tone of bread and candy and diesel exhaust. I thought your beauty's uncanny. How can be the way they took it away with a grin? Got me nostalgic remembering colds. Lonely as gin, controlled as a holy man's sin. I guess my poem wasn't ready for the hole I was in. But it's the groves and the way the sun sets over the road. See, Betunia as horizon and El Quds is made of gold. I forgot about the droves of demons searching for souls. Spitting rockets out they dragons trying to tag up our toes. I seen a mother on her knees crying, wondering why. Her 
her baby's living in a pine box. He peacefully lies while the peace is a lie. You could see it in the gleam of his eyes, draped in flags. Is that his piece of the pie? And while he lay, his stories buried on the hill up the way, near the ruins with the pillars that were built in a day, I saw... I. I got the feeling that this burial had something to say, and as the holy men prayed, the demons started to spray. We saw the stones and the clutches of the youngest get thrown, and the hunger of the full bellies crushing their homes. We seen the smoke of smoldering hope suffocate dreams. I think it changed the color of the sky to purplish green. I seen the strength of a survivor clutching his key, seen the lock in the clouds above the dragon's decree, said he was sick of living in this prison permanently. He closed his teary eyes and told me, you're a refugee. Thank you. Um, okay, how about this one? They labeled us the third world as oil rig, siphoned the land's blood, no need for lamb's blood. The phantoms have arrived. They got no God but a dollar that lies. They call it freedom, but the people of color denied. They start wars over property to falsify prophecy, wreck third world economy so you could sip coffee free, operate through monopolies justified by law degrees. No room for autonomy in this corporate oligopoly. That's the part of me through anger and stress and I, as I inhale the cess left by the industrial complex built on the sweat of the working man's neck and on the stolen land that they annexed. Thank you guys so much. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, you guys, George Lamam is up next. Uh, that's going to be exciting. And thank you all for coming.